Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. In this video, what I want to take a look at is calculating the main feeder conductor for this bank of motors. In previous videos, we looked at calculating the main feeder overcurrent device. And in other videos, we looked at calculating individual branch circuit conductors and individual branch circuit overcurrent devices. Again, we're focusing on just this feeder conductor for the bank of motors. And the rule that we're going to be referencing is 28108, subrule 1, items A, B, and C. The first thing I want to discuss is item A in subrule 1. Okay? Item A discusses what happens if all of our individual motors are continuous duty. Because again, when we're talking about conductors, we don't care about the individual information about the motor. What we really care about is obviously the FLA as well as the duty rating of the motor. And you can see we have two continuous duty rated motors and two intermittent, or we have two non-continuous, I should say, uh, duty rated motors as well. Item A talks about only continuous motors. And what it breaks it down into is we're going to take the highest FLA of all the continuous motors and then we're going to multiply that by 125% and then add the rest of the continuous duty rated motors. Okay, For our non-continuous item B, it tells us that we're going to go to table 27 and we're going to find that multiplying factor for what our duty rating of our motor is. We're going to find that calculated value and then we're going to add all those calculated values together. Okay, and the reason that I'm not doing individual videos for these is because in item C, it actually gets us to do both of those again. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in this video is we're going to treat this as a continuous bank and we're going to treat this as a non-continuous bank and they add together as one total. Okay, so we're going to start with our continuous bank. It tells me in several one item A to treat them all as continuous 125% plus the FLAs of all the rest. It's no different in C. It tells me the same thing. It says for those of the motor, for those motors that are in that bank that are continuous, again, we're going to take the highest FLA of the continuous times 1.25 and then add the rest of the continuous. Okay, so we'll start with that. We have 40 amps is our highest FLA that is continuous. Okay, we're not going to worry about these ones just yet. Okay, so 40 amps times 1.25 is 50 amps. Okay, then I'm going to take the rest of the continuous duty FLAs, which in this case is our leftover 36 amps, and I'm going to add them right to it, plus 36 amps. Gives us a total of 86 amps. So that's our total contribution towards our main, towards our main service feeder from our continuous duty motors. Okay, so we're done with those for now. Now we're going to move over to our non-continuous motors. Okay. And it tells me also in item C that we're going to take the calculated value of each one of these as in accordance with 28106 subrule 2, where we went and individually sized these branch circuit conductors. We're kind of going to do the same thing. We're not going to take it all the way to the branch circuit conductor size, but we do need to go to table 27 for each one of these motors or each one of these uh, duty ratings and find out what the multiplier is. So for example, if we have a short time duty, of five minutes. We're going to go to table 27, we're going to go down that column until we find short time duty, then we're going to go over until we find the time rating. So for five minutes short time duty, we should see a rating of 110%. Okay, so we're going to take the FLA, this 50 amp FLA, and we're going to multiply it by 1.1, which gives me 55 amps. This is my calculated value. Okay, this is what's going to contribute towards my main service feeder. We're going to do the same thing for our 60 amp motor here. Again, we have an intermittent duty rating. Okay, so we're going to go down until we find intermittent duty and we have 15 minutes. We're going to go across until we find the 15 minutes on that table. And it tells me for an intermittent duty at 15 minutes, I should see 85% okay, from table 27. All right, we're going to take our 60 amp FLA and multiply it by 0.85 and it's going to give me that calculated value of 51 amps. Again, that is my calculated value. So we're going to take these numbers. I've got a choice now. I have the 60 amp FLA or the 51 amp calculated. It very specifically tells me in 28108 uh, sub one item C to take the calculated values. So we're going to take those over here and we're just going to add them straight to what our continuous duty rated motors contribute towards this. So we have our 55 amps calculated value and we have our 51 amps 
calculated value. We're going to add those up and we should see 192 amps. This right here is the minimum ampacity of my service or feeder conductor for this bank of motors. So I'm going to go table two. Here I don't have to worry. Previously in another video I mentioned 28104 telling us that we have to select off the 75 degree column because we are using motors except for the class A motor. Okay, we don't have to worry about that anymore because if we look this conductor right here, okay, is not in contact with a motor. This would just be classified as we're going to use 4006 which is our lowest termination temperature which over here we have indicated was 75 degrees. So we're going to go to table two and we're going to use a 75 degree again but for a slightly different reason. So table two, 75 degree column with 192 amps, minimum ampacity, meaning I cannot be smaller than this value, I'm going to go with a 3 aught that is good for 200 amps. Okay, so hopefully this has helped. Hey, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.